We know what Vladimir Putin is up to in, in Ukraine. His cruelty and cynicism were on full display when he decided that he would invade Ukraine and bring it back into the Soviet orbit. He launched a horrific strike on the Ukraine capital of Kyiv. News reports desperately using and procuring now North Korean missiles to continue to launch those attacks on Ukraine. Then he tried to silence anyone in Russia who might dissent from his strategy. Anyone in Russia who actually had the, the audacity to suggest there should be democracy and freedom in that country. He sent one of his harshest critics to prison and he moves him around within Russia from time to time. The man's name is Alexei Navalny. He's now in Siberia in a prison and is going to stay in that prison indefinitely. Why? Vladimir Putin cannot countenance the thought that that man would be out of prison and speak freely in Russia about his feelings about Putin and his agenda. And so he puts him in prison and silences him. Mr. President, I'd like to, as an aside, note that I've come to the floor many times to discuss political prisoners around the world. I am inspired by my staffer, Chris Holman, who follows this carefully. He told me years ago that my speeches on the floor of the Senate may not sound like very important issues to me uh, at the time, but they are important to people around the world, particularly to political prisoners who learn secondhand and thirdhand that some senator in the United States of America mentioned their name or showed their photograph on the floor of the United States Senate. It's hard to believe that this has any impact on history, but it does. Chris Holman on my staff has shown me over and over again that if I stand up and speak up and reach out to the embassies of these countries that are jailing their political prisoners, it can make a difference, and it does. Some of these prisoners, after years in prison, are finally, finally released. Many of them make it to the United States and come to my office in tears to thank me for a speech on the floor of the Senate. It's hard to imagine in my station in life that anybody cares, but it does make a difference, certainly to them and their families, but often to the countries that are jailing them. I'd like to speak for a few minutes this morning about, about a few of these prisoners. Navalny, I've already mentioned. His fe fellow patriot, Vladimir Karamurza, remains jailed by Putin on nonsense charges and public fears of what they represent. He came by my office. He had been imprisoned in Russia and decided to go back after he was released and protest publicly. He knew what he was getting into, but his passion for principle is so overwhelming that he did it anyway. He sits in prison today as a symbol of freedom in a country where there is little or no freedom of expression. Vladimir Karamurza. I display these photographs just to make sure that you know they're real people and their families know that we're doing our best to keep their causes alive. Navalny has gone through living hell by Vladimir Putin in Russia. Vladimir Karamurza was in my office, this man was, and told me he was headed back to Russia to get arrested again. Think about that as your life's mission, trying to change a country, change a leader, fighting a dictatorship, and a bloodthirsty one at that. We must not allow Putin to prevail in Ukraine. I am saddened and angered that some of my colleagues in the United States Congress have grown tired of the cause of the Ukrainians in defeating Vladimir Putin and have decided they want to move on to other things. We cannot give up on our own values, and the Ukrainians are fighting for our values today and dying in the process. To provide military assistance to them and encouragement is the least we can do for a country that is fighting for the same thing that we say inspired the United States creation. The next poster I'll put up here is Belarus. In Belarus, we have the last dictator in Europe. His name is Lukashenko. He sold out his nation to Putin, and there are more than a thousand political prisoners, four of whom I want to mention. This man 
Elias Pinyalatsky, and I apologize if I've mispronounced his name, was the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize and was jailed from 2011 to 2014. He came to visit me here in the Senate after he was released. Then he went back to Belarus, protested Lukashenko's dictatorial ways, and was jailed again. He's been in jail since 2021. He's not a young man. He has clearly devoted his life to freedom and is prepared to live in prison to prove it. Opposition leader, Sergei Tikhonovsky, jailed in 2020 for having the temerity to actually run in an election against the dictator, Lukashenko. I know, his, I know him briefly, um, we met, but I particularly know his wife, Svetlana Tikhonovsky. She ran in his place when he was arrested and probably won that election. We'll never know because of Lukashenko's distortion of the actual vote. But Tikhonovsky's wife is living in Lithuania and traveling across the Europe and the world to plead his cause and to plead the cause of the Belarusian people. And two jailed Radio Free Europe journalists, Andrei Kuznetsik and Ihar Lozik, they too are paying the price for Lukashenko's di dictatorial ways. In 2020, millions of Belarusian voters turned out to vote for a better future. Not the Soviet area dystopia Lukashenko and Putin are trying to impose on their Ukrainian neighbors and on their Ukrainian neighbors. That is what this larger debate on the supplemental funding is all about. Will the United States stand on the side of these people who are risking their lives and giving their lives every day in prison to fight for democracy? Or are we tired? We want to move on to another subject. I'm not tired of democracy. I'm here because of it. Move these photographs, these exhibits for a second. It isn't just Vladimir Putin's orbit where we see this fight for democracy. In Cambodia, there was a glimmer of hope that new leadership could bring some change to the country's repressive history. An early move that new President Hun Manet can take in the the direction of justice would be to release jailed human rights activist Terry Sang in Cambodia, who is serving a bogus six-year sentence. Last year, the Senate Appropriations Committee unanimously passed an amendment which I offered, barring any Cambodian official involved in her jailing from receiving or keeping a U.S. visa. The easiest way to lift that restriction is to release Terry Singh without any further delay. And in Algeria, journalist and independent media owner Isan El Khadi is serving a dubious seven-year sentence as part of a larger crackdown on free media and democracy. Such repression is a tragic setback to the country's vibrant free press that emerged after Algeria's terrible civil war. Amnesty International, the Committee to Protect Journalists, and the European Union are among those who have joined in calling for his immediate release. A few weeks ago, I traveled with a congressional delegation led by Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia to Guatemala. And finally, these cases I mentioned here came up during our visit. The troubling jailing of anti-corruption prosecutor Virginia Lapara and the journalist Jose Ruben Zamora under the previous regime in Guatemala. Their incarceration occurred amid multiple efforts to derail the peaceful transition of power of the new president-elect Bernardo Arevalo. Mr. President, January 14th may be just another day on the calendar here in Washington in, in a few days ahead, but it will be a major historic opportunity in Guatemala to finally bring to office a man who was duly elected president of that country. We met with him. There's resistance to the transition, but we believe that he will prevail. He was a clear winner in that contest and should be given the chance to serve. I am pleased to share that Mr. Ms. Lepara was just released from prison to house arrest. That is a move in the right direction. It's a welcome step, and, but we call for her full release and dropping of charges 
as well as the immediate release of Mr. Zamora, another journalist. Mr. President, what we do here matters around the world for the large and small battles occurring for freedom and democracy. I can only hope that in the days ahead, someone somehow will get the message to the individuals that I've highlighted today that they are not forgotten, that they do not languish in prison unknown to the rest of the world. We have to speak up for these people, justice not only in the United States, but justice around the world. And it makes a difference. I encourage my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, look into the issue yourself. Find those people who are unjustly imprisoned for political reasons in these autocratic regimes and give them a word of encouragement yourself on the floor of the Senate. Amazingly, it does make a difference. I have seen many released and I hope to see more in the future. Time from us making these speeches, highlighting what they're going through may seem like a waste of time to some, but it's not. It is a valuable investment in the values which we share with these, these amazing people around the world. I yield the floor.